And this is a fundamental rule we find in meditation. We find it in growth practices. We find it in state of consciousness transformations. And what happens is you are identified, you have a subjective identity, something that you call yourself. And that seems to be the subject that you call yourself. <clears throat> seems to be a real subject. And a subject is defined as that which is aware of an object. But if you actually look at yourself, get a good sense of yourself, feel yourself, it's not a subject, it's an object. You're looking at an object. So what you call yourself, the thing that you're aware of, that's not who you really are. Everything you know about yourself as an object is actually exactly what you are not. And every time you identify with an object, whether it's your body or your thought or desire, any time you do that, then you're binding yourself to fragmented partial phenomena. And the result of that is suffering. So any identification with any finite object, bad news. The good news is there's something actually aware of that self of yours. And Ramana Maharshi, of course, called it the I hyphen I. So when you really look inside, you find, to put it very loosely, you have two selves. You have a self that can be seen, and you have the seer. The reason enlightenment is a little bit tricky is because it's so simple that fundamentally enlightenment is identifying your true self. And the true self is that which is not an object. So as you're sitting there and looking inside, okay, I'm aware of this room, I'm aware of this body, sensations arising in this body, I'm aware of thoughts, yeah? There's an awareness of all of these, and these things are arising in your field. Now, let one of the things that's arising be your own self, your own sense of, well, this is me, this is, I'm a doctor, lawyer, waitress, painter, poet. That's another object. It's not what you are. But there is something that's aware of that. And that is a pure self. Zen Master Shibayama actually calls it absolute subjectivity because it can never be made an object. So what happens is you are looking inside and you're going, I have thoughts, but I am not my thoughts. You know this exercise. I have desires, I am not my desires. I have needs, I am not my needs. I am aware of images, I am not those images. So what am I? What's left? Am I the damaged child that I find when I look inside? No, that's an object. I mean, it's nice it's there, but that's not what you are. And so as you push back and back, nete, 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 to this transcendental self, it has different tones and qualities than your empirical self, the self that you can see the self that you're identified with, and frankly, the self you're defending. We all defend that empirical self. It's a case of colossal mistaken identity. And as Patanjali said, ignorance is the identification of the seer with the instruments of seeing. So we have identified with all of these things that we are not. And so this transcendental self, as you start to rest in that, rest in this witness that is aware of all of these things, you can't see the witness. That's the first mistake people make when they're trying to get in touch with absolute reality is they think, okay, all I have to do is look in the correct place and I will be able to see my real self. Anything you can see as an object, and it's not your real self. 
So what happens as you go back saying, I have thoughts, I am not my thoughts. I have desires, I'm not my desires. All you start, you don't see something else. Generally what happens is you start to just get a feeling of freedom, of release from these things that you're identified with and that you thought was your real self. Fundamentally, every major wisdom tradition wants you to move from an identification with finite, phenomenal events and identify instead with this transcendental openness. And the transcendental self, incidentally, of course, doesn't have any qualities. It's a vast emptiness, vast openness. And you experience this emptiness and openness because it's the space in which everything is arising right now. And that is your awareness. So that shift from being identified with a small self to being identified with the transcendental self, or from small mind to big mind, is the fundamental awakening process. And there are any number of ways you can do it. The transcendental self is timeless, lives in the, in the now. So, you, so Eckhart would write his whole recent book on the power of now, and that's just one way to focus on it, and that's fine, works for some people. But fundamentally, it's waking up to this pure self. And this pure self is uniformly held to be nothing other than God. God is pure subject in you. God is the witness in you. God is the ray of consciousness in you that's unbroken. And that switch from an identity with a small, finite self that's going to stay here, get bruised, get tortured, and die, sort of the first noble truth, um, to this original face that you had before your parents were born. And this sense of freedom and openness that you might have as you're sort of disidentifying with these lesser things that you are not, that sense of, of, of vast openness uh, and the sense of its presence. Some people relate to you with a simple phrase I used earlier, which is I am or I amness. And you have a sense of I amness right now. The thing to notice about that is it's the only thing in your awareness that's always constant. So if you try to remember what was actually in your awareness 10 hours ago, you can probably recreate and say, okay, I was there, I saw that, sort of that. But one thing is present now that was present 10 hours ago, and that was a feeling of I amness. Whatever you were doing back then, there was still a sense of I amness. You could still have recognized that. Five years ago, no matter what was happening, there is still the sense of I amness. That I amness is you can keep pushing it back. It's the same I amness you had 10 years ago. It's the same I amness you had 100 years ago. Show me the face you had before your parents were born. That's a literal koan. That's not a symbolic thing. There's something in you right now that existed prior to your parents' birth. And it's that sense of I amness. And the journey of enlightenment, if you want to put it in a simplified form, is the journey that moves you from your empirical self, anything that you can see or know about yourself, any object, to pure awareness, pure self, your true self. The self that cannot be made an object, but is the space in which all of this is arising.